When I gave my score prediction for this game, I thought it was going to be 28-26. And Ravens were going to win, but I just thought it was going to be a stressful game. I thought it was going to be a close game. I thought it was going to be one of them Baltimore Ravens heart attacks games that we are all so used to. But the Ravens, once again, they prove that we do not care about what your record is, for better or for worse. And the reason I say for better or for worse, because if it's for better, uh, the Ravens don't care if you are a hot team, if you're one of the top teams in the league. Like, again, we saw against the, uh, the Detroit Lions a couple weeks ago. Detroit Lions were coming in hot. Ravens, they blew them out the water. But then we saw against the Cardinals, they were coming in not. And they were not a good team, bad record. And Ravens, they struggle with them. They only beat them by seven. Uh, but then today against the Seattle Seahawks, uh, they blew them out like crazy. And I just was not expecting that, but was not complaining over it one bit. And we all loved it. And I'm here to share my post-game thoughts on that game that we all watched. A lot of us together in the live stream yesterday. So shout out to y'all uh, where the Baltimore Ravens won 37-3. to um, And real quick. Before we get into this, if you want your own varsity jacket like this or a gray and black one uh, or a different color one, you can go to standwithusclothing.com and use code engraven for 10% off. The link to all of that is right down below in the description. It'll take you right there. So uh, getting into this game, uh, Lamar Jackson, when you look at his numbers, his numbers, they were not sexy. They were not eye popping. I mean, he went 21 for 26, 187 yards, ever 7.2 yards per throw. Uh, no touchdowns, but no picks. Oof, OK, so I'll take it. Um, but again, they got the win. And Lamar Jackson, he did apologize. To uh, fantasy people He, he said my fault Y'all on his uh, Instagram story uh, Last night um, But we ain't worried About no fantasy points I know I sure Ain't worried about no fantasy I don't even play fantasy I ain't played fantasy In like five, six years uh, But they got the win They got the dub um, And Lamar Jackson the, the the few throws that he missed I know early on they were He was trying to get Rashad Bateman on the deep ball You just saw it And then Rashad Bateman Was trying to get the deep ball But they just They, they, they couldn't make it happen So um, they'll get it eventually And then there was another throw um, Where Oh It was a pretty pass And it was to Justice Hill And initially well, I remember watching it live Like oh man uh, That's This is going to be nice But I thought Justice Hill dropped it um, but the defender, when they showed the replay, the defender got his hand in there in like the last second. Like, oh, okay, that was a great play by the defender. Uh, but Lamar Jackson, he was pretty sharp in this game, uh, minus the, the very beginning of it, but he, he was pretty sharp. Uh, again, when you, you throw 26 passes and you only miss five, uh, yeah, that's pretty sharp. Um, and he now leads the NFL in completion percentage. So look at that. Um, Lamar Jackson just continuing to do things that – he just continuing to show his growth, man. Um, he And I appreciate that this offense is allowing him to grow. They're allowing him to take that next step as a quarterback because that's something that we knew he could do. We know we knew what he was capable of for, for years. But we just, I just felt like the previous offenses, not that they were bad, but they just – there was no growth. That They had reached their level of growth and, and they were capped. So I felt like it had been time to move on years ago. But, hey, it's better late than never, right? Um, so now they're here. So Lamar Jackson in this game, um, on, on the ground too. Now on the ground, like I've been telling y'all, I feel like Lamar Jackson has been holding back a bit. He's been a little reserved. Now in this game, he started to get a little more loose. We got, we got to see some real Lamar Jackson speed on some of them runs. Uh, so, so shout out to Lamar. Now, um, oh, and then shout out to Tyler Huntley too. Because for Lamar, it was 30-3. to Tyler Huntley came in there. And you know, the Ravens, they really, 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 they, I mean, they've been really wanting to get OBJ a touchdown for forever. Uh, it's crazy that the, the first time we get to see OBJ dance, uh, it, it comes in, what, week nine? So nine weeks through the season. I thought we would have been seeing him. Then we ain't seen this dude dance all year long. But now we finally got to see it. So that's a good thing. Um, so shout out to Tyler Huntley. Shout out to the offense for just making sure, like, hey, Odell, we, we got you. We, we ain't forget about you. Um, so they, they, they took care of him yesterday. So that was nice to see him um, <coughs> get his first touchdown. And I almost thought that uh, he was out of bounds when he caught it. But great throw by Tyler Huntley. Great catch by Odell Beckham Jr. And I think it was on Tariq Woolen, too. So a good cornerback. So I was like, all right, Raven, look here. I see y'all. Um, anyway, uh, back to the running game. We saw Lamar Jackson take off. Uh, yesterday, we saw Gus Edwards. He, he again, Gus, Gus doing Gus stuff, man. Five carries. For 52 yards and two touchdowns. Five carries and 52 yards. Again, Gus Edwards, he just be showing. He like, hey, look, man, I, I got it. I, I can do this. Five carries for 52 yards. Average 10.4 yards a carry. Like, what is that? But he only got five carries. Justice Hill, 13 carries for 40 yards. He averaged 13, I mean, excuse me, 3.1 yards per carry. And Justice Hill, him and Lamar Jackson at the mesh point, just it's really weird. I, I don't know what the issue is. I I, I I don't I don't know. Like the 
chemistry is off. I don't know whose fault that was yesterday. Uh, whether it was Lamar, did Lamar pull it back later? Did Justice uh, grab it too? I, I I don't know what the I don't know what it is with them too. Um, but <clears throat> I do see Justice Hill getting less carries. Um, not only because of that mesh point fumble, but because of Mr. Keaton <laughs> Mitchell. <laughs> That boy Keaton Mitch, man. Oh, ooh, I was so happy, man. I was so happy. And I know y'all were too, man. Just to see Keaton Mitchell out there. Because when we saw him carry the ball a couple weeks ago, um, he almost had a touchdown on one of those carries. But when he breaks, like he breaks big. And we saw this in the preseason. And I remember people in the preseason, they were like, Oh, it's just the preseason. He's going against backups. And I said, Well, even though, yeah, he is going against backups, but it gotta start somewhere. It got to start somewhere, so let's see what he does with an opportunity, yeah, against better defenses and real and starter defenses, but also with a starting offensive line. And Keaton Mitchell was amazing yesterday. Amazing. I was so mad at the broadcast because I was watching the game. Ravens obviously blowing them out, and they went to commercial break. So I'm like, all right, watch them. We're doing the live stream and whatnot. They go to commercial break, come back, and they playing Saints and Bears. I'm like, why, why would you change that, man? I don't want to watch no Saints Bears, man. I ain't trying to watch that. So I missed Keaton Mitchell's his sixty yard run that he got after all the runs that he broke before. But I missed a, I missed another big run by Keaton Mitchell. I was so mad, man, because I'm I'm looking at the the, the live chat in the, in the in the live stream and everybody going crazy like, whoa, Keaton Mitchell, Keaton Mitchell, Keaton. I'm like, what what's happening? So, but I, I did see it on Twitter though. But anyway, um, he was amazing yesterday, and so Keaton Mitchell got nine carries, just just nine carries. That's it. For 138 yards, fifth average 15.3 yards per carry, and had a had one touchdown, first touchdown of his career. So that was beautiful. Um, <clears throat> said his dad couldn't be there yesterday. Who used to play for the Ravens? Who was on the Ravens' uh, 2000 Super Bowl team? Um, but he said he said it'll be more games like that to come. So it ain't no big deal. So I said, okay, that Keith Mitchell. I ain't mad at you at all. And the thing with Keith Mitchell that um. That I really, really loved, I really, really appreciated, is that while he speed back, the, clearly the, they say he's the fastest person on the team. Um, but with Keith Mitchell, so you would think with a speed back, like okay, if he's getting, if he's breaking these big games, it's just strictly because of his speed, and that's it. No, it wasn't. Now his speed played a big, a huge factor, obviously, but it wasn't the only factor. Keith Mitchell was also breaking tackles. He was breaking tackles. Had he not broken tackles, then some of them runs, especially that sixty yard run, that wouldn't have that would not have been a thing. So the thing with Keaton Mitchell that that was even more impressive that th th again this is a speed guy, speed guy, super fast, but he's elusive, obviously elusive, but he broke tackles. So guys made contact with him and he got off of them. He they he removed them from his presence and kept it moving. So that's dangerous. That's very, very dangerous. So shout out to Keaton Mitchell for that. And um, I mean, we just we've been looking forward to Keaton Mitchell, but today he he said, Hey, I'm here. And what we talked about in in a video this week, we talked about some of the players that should be the happiest uh after the uh the trade deadline. Gus Edwards was one, uh Justice Hill was another one, but the one who I felt like should have been the happiest was Keaton Mitchell because this gave him a huge opportunity. Because had the Ravens traded <coughs> Excuse me. Had the Ravens traded for Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Saquon Barkley, any, any one of those running backs, or Javante, whoever, if the Baltimore Ravens had traded for a running back, Keaton Mitchell would be done. He would not get snaps on offense. He wouldn't because the pecking order would have went Gus Edwards, then whatever running back that they traded for, and Justice Hill. They would have divvied up the carries like that. Keaton Mitchell wouldn't be getting snaps. He certainly would not. Maybe if, if Justice Hill fumbled or something like that, or just some, may, but, but no, he he wouldn't be getting snaps. They wouldn't give the undrafted rookie free agent a running back. No, or, or, over a, a, a running back that they already got in Gus, and a running back that they traded for and gave up draft capital for. Like that's already a lot a lot of carries between them two alone. And then you got Justice Hill who been involved in the passing game a lot. So Keith Mitchell just he he wouldn't have found found his way on the field. On offense in my opinion had they traded for a running back so this benefited him a lot and he was like you know what Ravens let me show y'all why y'all made the right decision but this was really really nice to see um so I, I'm just looking forward to it this was big for him I saw a lot of Ravens fans saying all right well we're gonna miss you JK 
So, hey, we'll see what happens with that. Now, uh, the Baltimore Ravens wide receivers, Mark Andrews, he led the way. Nine catches, 80 yards. Surprised he didn't get a touchdown in this game, but he was putting in work, and he was getting a lot of yak. Um, my favorite play for Mark Andrews, I think it came on a third, and I want to say third and 18, I think. Third and just really long. And Mark Andrews, like, Mark Andrews turned into, like, a little little running back or something. The way that he had that vision, uh, he made a cut, and he started, he bounced it to the outside, and he was running, going at it, and he ended up making, a, like, a third and 18, a fourth and one. Then the Baltimore Ravens, they were going to go for it. Um, and because they were like, hey, we ain't just get 17 yards for nothing. Uh, they were going to go for it. And then they got the defense to jump off sides. So the Ravens are just, man, that, that game was amazing, man. But shout out to him. Odell Beckham Jr., uh, he had five catches for 56 yards. I know um, <clears throat> his, uh, he, with Lamar, he had four for 50, I believe, four catches for 50 yards. Uh, then he got that last catch, um, the touchdown uh, from Tyler Huntley uh, toward the very end of the game. So shout out to Odell Beckham Jr. Finally getting in the end zone. Isaiah Likely. I almost thought that he was going to score on a pass. Was it from Lamar or from Tyler Huntley? I think it's from Tyler Huntley toward the end of the game. But Isaiah Likely was getting – he was more involved in the game than ever. I think this is the most he's ever been involved in a game. I know there was a game a couple weeks ago where he was uh, he was lining up. I mean, he, he was out there from the jump um, lining up as a blocker. Uh, but this game, he was involved a lot. Rashad Bateman had three catches for 28 yards, uh, so they did get him involved too. Zay Flowers, quiet game for Zay Flowers. Um, I know a lot of people were upset, like, man, why Zay Flowers ain't getting the ball? Why Zay Flowers ain't getting any touches? Like, look, man, this, <clears throat> this is a good problem to have, in my opinion. When Zay, Fl- Zay Flowers, one catch for 11 yards, and oof, that boy, oof, he is too shifty, man. It don't make no sense. But Zay Flowers, one catch for 11 yards. Ravens won 37-3. 37-3. Zay Flowers had one catch for 11 yards, and Ravens won 37-3. That's a good problem to have, man. That's a good problem to have. Yeah, we would love to see him involved. We would love to see a lot more people involved. But they won 37-3. to So, yeah, <laughs> Ravens were involved with scoring. And that, that's the biggest involvement that they need to be involved in, in my opinion. <clears throat> so, shout out to them. Um, now, that is the offense and, and, and the thing about the offense And we're going to talk about this more later on this week But that offense that we saw At least from my opinion They were not rolling like that They they That is not an offense that has peaked That is not an offense that is just Absolutely out there killing it uh, They still have a lot of work to do uh, Especially in the, the passing game They just, it's not all the way there yet But they still put up 37 points Still Still put up 37 points. Lamar and them, they put up 30 points. Tyler Huntley came in and put up another seven. So for an offense that's not rolling like that, they not peaked, and they put up 37. <laughs> we talk about that later, baby. Now, <clears throat> Baltimore Ravens defense. Listen to this stat. It says, this came from uh, Shield, Shield uh, Kalipa. I know I probably messed up his name, so my apologies. Oh, Shil Kapadia. He said, the Seahawks have played 237 games under Pete Carroll. They have never had fewer first downs in a game than they had today with six. So I, I didn't realize they only had six first downs. Through 60 minutes. Like, li- that, that's crazy, man. Teams get that, like, in a half. Through 60 minutes, the Seattle Seahawks had a total of six first downs. Geno Smith, Kenneth Walker, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and the Jigba. Six total first down. That, that doesn't make any kind of sense. That's crazy. And then he also said no team in the NFL has had fewer than six first downs in a game this season. So the Ravens were... They made some nice history. Uh, Geno Smith, uh, his numbers, he, 13 for 28, 157 yards, average 5.6 yards, a throw, and he got picked once, and that was by Mr. Geno Stone. <sighs> he can't go nowhere. Straight up. Ravens got to figure it out. Geno Stone cannot go anywhere. He can't. They cannot let him leave. I know it's tricky. I know it's a crazy situation. I know it's like, ooh, whoa, what are we going to do? Ravens, you got to figure it out. You got to figure it out. You you cannot let Geno Stone go anywhere. He ain't, No, he ain't going nowhere. I'm telling you now, Ray, Geno Stone ain't going nowhere. 
So let 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 that be known. Anyway, um, <clears throat> the Baltimore Ravens they sacked uh, Geno Smith four times. Now, um, I know I did say I think the Baltimore Ravens got my message a little mixed up. I ain't complaining. But they got my message a little mixed up because I said Jadavian Clowney was going to get two sacks in that game. But Calvin Noy, he ended up getting two sacks in the game. I ain't complaining. We still good. Uh, but it's, it's it's all good. But uh, Jaday, I mean, excuse me, Calvin Noy, and on his sacks, he got back to back sacks. And on his second one, it was a forced fumble. And I think, yeah, that came after uh, Lamar had threw to Odell Beckham Jr. It was right before halftime. He threw to Odell Beckham Jr. And Odell Beckham Jr., he fumbled the ball. And that was a fumble. Uh, I remember we watched that replay like 50 times because they showed it like 50 times. Uh, I'm glad they showed it 50 times because I appreciated that because I always be wanting to see replays of stuff when it happens, and they showed it a lot, and it was a fumble. Odell did let the ball go before his knee hit the ground, um, <clears throat> and the Seahawks, of course, recovered. But then right after that, Kyle Vanoy, he said, hold up. I ain't trying to let them score. Sacked Geno Smith, then sacked and no, knocked the ball out just on the second sack. So that was a beautiful thing to see. Oh, Matabike, that's another one. Uh, Matabike, his, his money just it keeps increasing because he got a sack uh, in the game yesterday as well. So he, I think he got like seven and a half sacks, something like that. So he been going crazy. And then somebody who a lot of Ravens fans have been talking bad about, he showed up again. Adafi away, he got himself a sack too. So it's just been a beautiful thing, man. Baltimore Ravens, uh, I think they still lead the league in sacks. They probably should after today, but I, I don't know. They they probably do. Um, but that that's been amazing to see, man. Um, they the way that they can scheme up pressure now, it'd be even nicer if they ain't gotta just scheme up pressure. Sometimes they can send three or four and get there, and hey, maybe they, maybe sometimes they can do that. But um, yeah, man, it just it's been amazing to see it, man. Mike McDonald, we gonna miss you, unless now again, there's only one way that I see Mike McDonald staying, and we'll see if that happens. But we'll talk about that uh, another time. But this defense, man, they they were amazing. They were amazing. Even at, like, well, I really got to give the defense a huge, huge shout-out. Uh, right before halftime, I believe, is in the second quarter, um, <clears throat> Geno Smith completes that 50-yard pass, a catch-and-run to DK Metcalf. Huge play. So for them to stop DK Metcalf on that was huge. But then they held the, the Seahawks out of the end zone, and they held them to three. And that 50-yard play – it's probably, well, not probably, it is. It's the only reason that the Seahawks even got any points. Think about that. That, that is literally, the because the, that's the only points that they scored was a field goal from that. And Ravens have been doing a really good job this season of not giving up those huge plays like that for the most part. I know they gave up some to, um, to Zach Moss. I know they gave up a big chunk play to Derrick Henry. But... They ain't really, oh, and then in that Colts game, I, I think, uh, was it Pittman that had a big catch? But they ain't really been giving up them big plays like that. Oh, then the, then the George Pickens, I mean. So I'm, I'm remembering, uh, the, the far and few, though, far and few. Um, but Ravens have been doing a pretty good job overall stopping those big plays. Um, so with, to see them give that up, it was disappointing, but it, it was nice to see them hold it down. They said, all right, we gave up the 50 yards. Okay, oh, we got this. And they stopped them. But just to think about that, had they not given up that that fifty yard bomb, Seahawks get no points in the whole game. The Seattle again, Geno Smith, Kenneth Walker, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. Again, th these are conversations that I remember last year, or maybe the year before last. We were having conversations on if the Ravens could get one of those guys, they could pry one of those guys away from Seattle, especially DK Metcalf. Uh, Tyler Lockett wouldn't have been a bad option either But I mean my preference was DK Metcalf But anyway Like So these guys They're not bad receivers at all They're not I know a lot of Ravens fans Wanted them to draft Jackson Smith and the Jigba too So Just to, to see this Baltimore Ravens defense Hold those guys out like they did It's amazing stuff man It really is This defense is for real man It really is I, And again I, I can't let people discredit the defense I'm not gonna let you do that I can't. And, yeah, they will have even more tough tests coming up, but they've had a lot of tough tests already. They've gone against some good teams, and they have held it down. They have done their job. They have done their role. Even in the games that they lost against the, 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 the Colts, they were doing their thing. It was offense. Slipped up that game. 
No, I mean, the defense, they did give us some big runs to the outside, whether they bounced it to the outside. I think we were missing the Dafe away that game. But um, because they couldn't hold down the edge for nothing. But overall, this defense, they've they been doing their thing, man. And again, they've been missing people here and there. Marlon Humphrey missed four games. They they were missing Adafi away for a couple of games. Uh, they uh, Darius Washington, he been out. They missed Arthur Millett for a little bit. Um, they missed Marcus Williams. He been out for some games. And they just they, they they've gone through the rotation. David Ajabo, he's been out as well. Tyus Bowser ain't taking a snap yet. Like they've been and they still been showing up every single week. This defense is amazing, man. Just like, think about this, and we're going to talk about this later too, but the, the way that, how, how amazing this defense is, the offense ain't even catch up yet. They ain't even catch up yet, but they still been doing it. 7-2. 7-2. Saw them at a seven, seven and two. So, shout out to the Baltimore Ravens, man. They they took care of business. They took care of business in a big, 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 big way. Huge game uh, coming up against the Cleveland Browns. Uh, that's gonna be big. Um, but it's at the crib, so that's nice. Uh, then right after that, huge game coming up against the Cincinnati Bengals. That's gonna be big, and that's gonna be at the crib. So that's gonna be nice. And we we gonna be in a building for that game for that Bengals game. So um that that should be a lot of fun. So it's a night game. It should be. I know that energy is going to be insane. It's gonna be crazy, man. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but we'll see how it goes, man. We'll see how these Ravens do. We are just loving the fact that they're taking care of their business, man. And what I, I would love to see from the Ravens, especially as the season winds down, and we ain't at the end of it yet, which is great. Uh, but, you know, NFL season does go like that. But I want to see Ravens take care of their own. I, I don't want to be in no position where we got to be scoreboard watching. I mean, we scoreboard watch regardless. But where we got to be hoping for, all right, well, hopefully this team loses and that team loses. And then they do a cartwheel and then this team does a flip and then this team does some insane stuff. Ravens, just take care of your business. Take care of your business so you ain't got to worry about nobody else. 